Hey guys, how you doing? I'm Matt Gear, and you are watching Matt Gear TV on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. So this week, I am going to give you the first of a couple of lessons that I'm putting together on modal theory. So previously, uh, I've uploaded eight videos which cover seven shapes of the diatonic scale, which comprise all of the modes and can be used to cover all of the modes of the major scale. Um, and also one lesson which shows you how to start joining those shapes together. If you've not seen those videos, um, this video today on theory is still going to be useful to you. But what you need to remember is when it comes to learning the modes, actually there's the technique side and there's the theory side. And you really need to stick both of those things together because one without the other isn't that useful. If you know all the technique stuff and the shapes but you don't know how to use them, then that's not really that great. Conversely, if you know all the theory but you don't know the shapes, then that's not that useful either. So they're, they're two sides of the same coin and you need to learn both of them. So I'm going to link to all the previous videos below, so if you've not seen them yet, do go and check them out. So to start off with, I'm going to go back to the very basics of this. I'm going to start talking about the major scale because that's where we started from. And what we're talking about is the modes of the major scale because everything relates back to the major scale. And actually, the, the major scale is actually the foundation of Western music. So all theory with regards to modes, scales, chords, all of that stuff relates back to the major scale. So the language that we use to talk about music, you know, you see reference to a chord that's F sharp minor 9 flat 5. All of that terminology the fact that it's minor, the fact that it's a 9, the fact that it's got a flat 5 relates back to the major scale. It's a flat 5 in relation to the 5 that you find in a major scale. It's minor compared to the major scale. So once you understand major, you can then start to go on and that's really the key to help you understand all of the other stuff that's going on in, in music. So that's where we're going to start today. We're going to start with the major scale. Now, the major scale, we've looked at before, just going to give you a quick recap, and we played a three note per string shape. So that's a G major scale, starting and finishing on a G. Now, we're going to talk about scales to start off with rather than modes. Now, when we talk about scale, scale, the word scale comes from Latin, Italian, scala, which means stairs. You start at the bottom, you go up to the top, you finish at the top, you come back down again. And that's how we play scales, you know, as I just did. Bottom to top, back down again. That's kind of boring. It's not music. What you're doing is you're learning the notes within a scale that you can then pick and choose to play Music, which is the ultimate goal. Ultimate goal is not to learn scales and to play scales. The ultimate goal is to play music. And scales are one of the tools that you can use to go about doing that. Now, when we look at the major scale, we have an idea of a sound. Now, I'm going to switch to A. Now, there's a major scale. And it sounds major. Most of you will be familiar with that sound. And I can move to here, C. That's a major scale as well. F sharp. There's a major scale. They're all major scales. They all sound like a major scale. But if we're starting on a different note each time and the notes are different, what is it that makes it sound major? Now, it's tempting to say, and it's easy to say, it's the notes that make it sound major. And in a way it is, but actually it's a bit more subtle than that. It's a bit more sort of zen, if you like. What it is, it's not the notes that you play that make it sound major. It's the gaps between the notes that you play. It's the intervals between the notes that you play. So, I'll let that soak in for a minute because that might be a little bit confusing. Let me just talk about intervals there for a, for a second. If I play two notes, and I can either play them melodically, so one after another, or harmonically, both at the same time. If I play two notes together, I, there's a gap between them. I've got one note here, I've got one note here, and there's a distance between the two of them. I might have a note here, it might be a bigger gap or a smaller gap. It's still an interval. And depending on the interval that you play, has a 
different feel, it's got a different flavour, and each interval has its own feel and its own flavour. Pause for a drink. Now, there's two ways of explaining the intervals in a scale. We can either relate everything back to the first note, so the one, so we've got the gap between the one and the two, the gap between the one and the three, the one and the four, the one and the five, and so on and so forth, all the way up to the octave at the top, where we start again. So that's one way. We're not going to look at that today because actually by doing that we've got seven intervals that we need to talk about. One, you know, one to two, one to three, one to four, so on and so forth. And I'm not going to go into intervallic theory today. That's kind of a different conversation. And we're going to do that in a subsequent lesson. The easier way to look at it is actually to look at the gaps between each note and the preceding note. So, the gap between one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and so on and so forth, up to the octave. Now when we look at the major scale, and by virtue of that all of the modes of the major scale, there's actually only two intervals that are used, and that's it, and they're just repeated, and they're repeated in a particular order. And those intervals are as follows. So if I'm, I'm going to play on the open A string, so I'm going to play everything in a line on the A string. So I'm not going, I'm not crossing strings. I'm going to make it very easy for you to see what's going on here. So if I'm playing on the A string, the two intervals are as follows. It's either going to be a semitone or a half step, which equates to one fret's distance. So from open fret on the A string to the first fret. So that's a semitone or a half step. The other interval that's used in the major scale is a whole step or a tone, and that equates to two frets. So in this case, open fret to second fret. And that's it. So there's a half step and there's a whole step. And a combination of those is going to be used to create the major scale. So let's have a look at how that works. So I'm going to start, as I said, on the open A string, and I'm going to do everything just on that A string. And we're starting from the 1, so that open A string, that open A, is going to be our 1 for the scale that we're going to play, the major scale. Now, it goes like this. So from the 1 to the 2 is a whole step, so 2 frets. 2 to the 3 is a whole step, so another 2 frets. The 3 to the 4 is a half a step. Now we can hear already it has to be a half a step because if we were to play whole step, whole step, whole step, that doesn't sound right. That's not the major scale. Whole step, whole step, half step, and then another whole step, another whole step, a third whole step, and then a final half step gets us all the way up to the octave. So let me do that again. From the bottom A, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So what we've got is a sequence of intervals, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And whatever note we start from, we're going to start on an E this time, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. We always get a major scale. Start on the B. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Same thing. That's because the definition of the major scale is that sequence of uh, intervals. You can also, as I said, define it in terms of that interval, that interval, that interval. But we're not going to do that today. We're just going to look at this whole step, the whole step, half step process from the first note up to the top. So as I said, wherever we start with that, wherever we, whatever note we start from, if we then play a whole step, followed by a whole step, followed by half a step, followed by a whole step, followed by a whole step, another whole step, and then a half a step, will be an octave from where we started from, and we will just have played the major scale. So that's the definition of the major scale. How do the modes of the major scale then fit in after that? 
Well, put really simply, all the modes are, are displaced scales. Now, if we think about this, uh, if we think about this pattern of intervals, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, we can see it's not symmetrical. You've got two full steps and a half, then three whole steps and a half. And some of you might be thinking, okay, that sounds a little bit familiar, or you might be trying to visualise that in your head. The easiest way to visualise that is to visualise a piano keyboard. Because if you think about the black notes and the white notes on a piano keyboard, you'll see that they're not symmetrical. You've got two black notes grouped together, then a bit of a bigger gap, then three black notes grouped together, then a bit of a bigger gap, and then the same thing repeats again. And if you were playing C major, and this is for the guys who maybe know a little bit about playing the piano, if you play C major, C to C, you play all the white notes. But what you'll see when you look at that visually is you're playing a whole step, a whole step, and a half a step. And the half a step between the E and the F is where there isn't a black note, so you've got two white notes that sit directly side by side. And when you get to the top, the other half a step that you play between the B and the C is where you've got another two white notes sat side by side. So that's the shape, and that shape is what makes the major scale major, makes it sound like it does. So if we go back to the G major, just quickly, because that's what we've been looking at for all of the scales that we've been working on so far, and all of the shapes that we've looked at previously are based in G. And what we tend to do is actually start labelling, we're going to label the notes, so G is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then back to 1 again. And here's a diagram in terms of how this actually looks, so you can see the gaps between the notes. And what we're going to do is move on from that, because when you look at things linearly in a line from G to G, you don't really see the repetition, because actually once you get to the G at the top, you repeat the whole thing again, and you go round and round in circles. And it's just this long continuation of notes. So it's really useful to look at this as a circle, because once you look at it in a circle, actually you can decide whereabouts on that circle you want to start. So if we're starting on G, we're playing G Ionian as a scale. Now, remember, at this point we've been talking about scales all the time. When we're talking about playing modes, what makes the mode the mode that it is, is the tonal centre that you're playing over. So, the notes of G major stretched from the bottom to the top actually enable you to play G major, G Ionian, or A Dorian, or B Phrygian, or C Lydian, or all of those other modes that we've talked about before. But what makes C Lydian C Lydian is the fact that actually you're going to be playing the G major scale, G major diatonic family of scales, over a C chord. And actually it's a C major chord as well. And we'll go into more details why it's C major rather than C minor later. So what we need to think about is a tonal centre, and when I say that we're starting and finishing on a note, that's correct from a scale point of view, but we'll, I'll assume that when we're playing these modes, if I'm playing G Ionian, I'm going to play the G major, the G diatonic scale, over a G major chord, and just a G major chord. We're not going to talk about chord changes at the moment. If I'm talking about A Dorian, we're going to play the G diatonic scale, family of scales, and it can be any one of those seven shapes that we've played, but we're going to play that over the A minor chord, and that A minor chord creates the tonal centre based on the A. Same with B minor, if we're going to play B minor and play that same family of scales, G diatonic family, over B minor, what we'll get is the B Phrygian mode. So, what is it about the modes, though, that makes them sound different? Because if I play them, if I play G major, if I had to play G Dorian rather than going to A Dorian, you can start to hear the difference a lot more obviously because we're playing G, everything's starting and finishing G. If I play G Phrygian, G Lydian, I'll just 
leaning on the sharp four there so you can hear it. So they all sound different. And the reason that they sound different is this. If we look at the circle again in G, we can see that we've got G, A, B, all the way around back to G again. And we've got this whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, step, step sequence. Now, if I start on the A, and the A becomes my tonal center rather than the G, and then I play the notes of that scale from A round to A, <clears throat> we don't have whole step, whole step, half step anymore. We have whole step, half step, then whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, and then a whole step at the end. And by virtue of that fact, it sounds different because from the, if we now call the A the one, we can see that from the one to the three, it's a minor third now, rather than a major third when we start with G as the one. And we've also got a major sixth. So that's the sound of Dorian. That's what Dorian is. And that's what makes it different from the major. It's the intervals between the notes and how they're ordered. If we go up to Phrygian, so if we go around to B and start on the B and go from B all the way around to, to B again, we'll see that the first interval is actually a half step. And that's really interesting because what that means is that that is effectively a flat two. So it's like a minor scale, like Aeolian mode, but but it's got a minor second. So we can pick any one of those notes on that circle and wherever we start, we can see, and wherever we start, as I said, we're calling that the tonal centre because we're imagining that we're playing over that particular chord. We can then see that that's the mode that we're playing it. So we'll pick another one, F sharp. And this is a not particularly commonly used one. If we start on F sharp as the tonal centre, we're playing F locrian. If we start on the E, we're playing E minor. E Aeolian, so that's the relative minor mode. And so it's about where you start on this sequence. As I said, it goes round and round and round, so it's circular. And depending on where you start, you then have, you're starting at a different position on this sequence of intervals. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, which is Ionian. But depending on where else you start, you're getting a different sequence of notes. Here's the list of the steps uh, for each of the modes of the major scale and if you can't just in case you can't read my writing I'm going to put all this below as well in the description of the video below so you can actually see um, How they all work and this works for any Note that you start from so if you you know whatever note you start from if you follow that sequence That's written out there for Lydian you will get the Lydian mode, and again, assuming that the note that you're starting on is the tonal centre that you're playing over, so you're playing on a chord based on that note. Also, this works for any particular chord family. So we've done everything in G here, so everything's in the diatonic key of G. So we've got one sharp, we've got an F sharp. This works in C, works in B flat, works in E flat, works in A, works in whatever key you want. So what you can actually do is, as, as homework if you like, is to try and derive the modes in all of the other keys. If you're not sure how to do that, don't worry because I am going to cover that in subsequent lessons and we're going to start talking about the cycle of fifths and how we get these key, key signatures. But for now, hopefully that's enough information for you to go away with. Hopefully that's made sense to you. If it doesn't, Go back, check it all out again. I'm going to put some information in the video uh, in the description below. And that's going to cover quite a few things as well. And there's the, the little diagrams that I've done for you today. Again, hopefully you can read my handwriting. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, feel free to add a question. Uh, add a question in the comments box below. Uh, and in a subsequent lesson, what I'm going to do is we're actually going to look at the second way of looking at the modes from an intervallic point of view. So we've looked at, as I said earlier, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4. 
what we'll now what we'll look at next time is one to two, one to three, one to four, one to five. And what you can see from that is a direct way of comparing all of the modes and actually what gives them the, the flavour that they have. We've kind of hinted at it today, you know, we've said Phrygian's got a flat two. Okay, so what does that mean in the grand scheme of things? How does that sound compared to the major? Mixolydian, we can say the Mixolydian is the major scale but with a flat seven. Okay, what does, what does that mean? So for now though, that's everything for today. Um, hopefully that's not scrambled your brains too much because I know when you start talking about modal theory it is something that sounds really dry and really uninteresting. But actually, just think that what modal theory is, is understanding a scale. And that scale is the major scale. If you can understand that, understand what it is about the major scale that makes it the major scale, everything else will just come off the back of that. So, as I said, any questions, just stick them in the comments box below. And I'll be going into further detail in terms of the intervallic way of looking at modes in a subsequent lesson in another week or so. So, until then, you guys take it easy. I've been Matt Gear. This has been Matt Gear TV. I'll see you next time. Cheers.